Hey gang, so welcome to chapter four. This is part of unit two. Uh, in this unit, we're going to cover chapters four through nine. All this week is going to be a busy, busy week. So just buckle up and I'm going to do about, I'm going to do my best to, to do two lectures, two chapter lectures every day. Um, chapters four and five, five and uh, six and seven and eight and nine, and hopefully have you all six chapters by by Wednesday afternoon. So again, I don't want to kill you with lectures, but I absolutely want to tell you what's important and tell you the application of it. So chapter four is all about business level strategy. So we'll start with the definition of that and then we'll talk about how business level strategy actually comes into play and what you do and, and different types of generic business level strategies. Okay. So to set the stage, you need to remember that strategy, strategic management, is all about earning above average returns. Okay, now we're making some caveats here. Uh, one is that we're in a market economy. Another caveat is that we are um, a publicly traded company, and a publicly traded company obviously has different stakeholders that they have to satisfy, but perhaps the most important of those stakeholders is actually the shareholder, the owner of the company. Um, and, and that can vary. Certainly, stakeholder theory posits that companies that are um, appeal to a broad base of stakeholders, diverse stakeholders, um, are more successful. But but certainly, for what we're talking about, we need to earn above average returns. So remember that uh, strategic competitiveness is about getting that above average return. And remember, with publicly traded companies, there's typically only two ways that the owners of the company get paid. The first manner in which our customers get paid is by dividends. That's distributions of profits that the company has earned in the past. Uh, the second way that the company shareholders get paid is through capital appreciation of their stock. And up until the point that the shareholder actually sells the stock, there is no earnings on that because otherwise we we simply just have paper gains, right? Or paper losses if our stock goes down. So it's actually when the product or the, the stock changes hands that the customer actually earns money. So keep that in mind, okay? When we say above average returns, what are we talking about? We're talking about the way that the customer, their shareholders get paid, and that is through capital gains, appreciation of their stock price and through dividends or distributions of earnings, okay? So remember in chapter three, um, or perhaps it was in Globus Lecture, I forget now, I, I mentioned that str strategies need to be intentional, okay? So chapter four kind of hits that a little bit when they talk about them being purposeful, okay? So they need to be intentional. They also need to be consistent and they need to be logical. In other words, when I say that they need to be intentional, what do I mean? Um, strategy is not an accident. Hope is not a strategy. Just putting something out there is not a strategy. Um, the absence of a strategy almost guarantees failure. Okay. So what do I mean when I say that they need to be logical? Um, what I mean with that is you wouldn't do make a decision in one area that contradicts something that you're doing in another area. If your vision and mission is to deliver superior value by selling um, high quality products at a premium price, and, and that's just, you know, that's just something right off the top of my head. Um, if that's your mission statement to sell high quality products at a premium price, then you wouldn't Put a product in the market that is middle of the road. Okay, so that would be inconsistent. It'd be illogical. Um, you have to make sure that what you're doing just makes sense. Okay, so consistent, internally consistent, right? You wouldn't necessarily for Globus where you have two product lines. Uh, you wouldn't want to position one of those as a pre premium product and the other as a very basic or entry level or cheap product, okay? So strategy has to tie back to your mission, vision, and values of the company, 
okay? And it's got to be consistent and intentional, okay? So we need to take action that matches what our mission and vision is as we implement our strategy, okay? So when we talk about business level strategy, we're talking about making decisions about how we sell stuff, how we compete against our rivals on a day-to-day -day basis. And business level strategy goes back to those core competencies that we have, regaining a competitive ad advantage, but that competitive advantage is rooted in our core competencies or the things that we do best. Our core competencies arise from our capabilities, which are the things that we do with our resources, okay? So remember in Globus, everybody has the exact same resources as you start. You've got the same factory, you've got the same workforce, you've got the same inputs into your product. It's up to you to do something differently to make your product distinct, okay? Business level strategy is something that every business has to develop, they have to implement, and it's the core strategy that defines how we compete on a day-to-day -day basis. I'd like for you to remember that strategy is not a routine decision, okay? Strategy is not something that we do um, every day, okay? Strategy instead manifests itself in the way that we compete on a day-to-day -day, day -day basis, okay? So just think about that. And I'd also like to destigmatize the word exploit um, if you prefer the word leverage. That's really what I'm talking about here when I say we exploit core competencies in a specific product market, okay? So for Globus, for example, you have eight product markets. You have action capture cameras or wearable like GoPro cameras, and you have UAV drones. Okay, so you've got two product lines and you have four geographic markets and those geographic markets are North America, Europe, Africa, Asia, Pacific, and Latin America. Okay, so you actually have eight product markets. Okay, two products times four different geographic markets. Okay, so some things that we need to iron out in business level strategy. What we're really talking about is number one, who we're going to serve. Okay, who are our customers? Uh, number two, what needs or wants for that customer will we satisfy or attempt to satisfy? And then third, how do we satisfy those needs? Now, obviously, we've got to be working in the free market because if the government dictates the products and services that you have to sell, if the government dictates who your customers are and dictates what your price must be, we're no longer playing in a market economy, right? That's what we call a command economy, um, where the government has lots and lots of control. And in a lot of instances in a command economy, the government controls all of the resources, okay? So they get to decide everything. So the customer is at the forefront of our business level strategies. We've got to satisfy that customer in, in such a way that we're going to continue to have them as a customer, okay? So strategic competitiveness is what happens when the firm satisfies our customers using the competitive advantage as the basis for competition, okay? Successful companies have to do two things. They have to satisfy their customers and they have to meet the needs of new customers. In other words, we've got to keep our existing customer base and we've got to go out and attract new customers. We can put it differently. You probably studied this in principle marketing, principles of marketing. Um, four basic ways to, to sell stuff. You can sell old products to old customers or existing customers. You can sell old products to new customers or you can sell new products to old customers or you can sell new products to new customers, okay? At its core, we've got to keep the customers that we have satisfied and keep them purchasing and hopefully sell them more product in, in the meantime and we've got to meet the needs of our new customers. So the customer's at the forefront of strategic management, and it's largely, when we say business level strategy, what we're talking about is how we compete, okay? So I'm going to go into the generic strategies and give you some hopefully real helpful, practical application of how to implement a strategy.